let's install Daytona on Hetzner. So just real quick, had to GitHub and get the Daytona installer repo up and running. That will tell you a little bit about what you're gonna need. So at a minimum, you're gonna want four vCPUs, 16 gigs of RAM. I recommend doubling that, and you're gonna need at least 200 gigs of disk. Uh, you'll have to have a firewall uh, set up. You're gonna need SSH, so port 2280 and 443 for the web application. 30,000 for Daytona to use to SSH to the individual workspaces. Um, other than that, Ubuntu 2204 is probably good enough for operating systems, and you'll need a domain name. I'm hosting mine in Cloudflare. That just happens to be where that host is. Um, you'll need the domain, and then you'll also need a second record for adding a wildcard, so star and the domain. Uh, we'll show a little bit of what that looks like. You'll also need to add two records while you do the install. So have that you know, terminal or UI up and running so that you can add those DNS records while, or while we're working. Uh, other than that, you'll also need to have GitHub set up uh, or GitLab or whatever your choice is. You can read those instructions here, but you'll need those OAuth tokens. Uh, and you'll need to know your domain name in advance. So let's go to Hetzner. A couple things to do in advance. Um, I went ahead and started an instance. It was really fast, but just to make sure I have everything up and running, I've already done that. Uh, you will need to have a firewall set up. So let's go look at what that looks like. Uh, I went ahead and added this, uh, 22, 443, 80, and 30,000. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, then I didn't add any volumes. The instance that I use is large enough, but let's see what that looks like. Um, I'm currently at a quota. I'm a brand new Hetzner uh, uh, user, so I don't have a lot of quota. Uh, I went ahead and used US West because it's the closest to me, 2204. I used a dedicated CPU, and I went ahead with this one, the CCX33. It's a fantastic value. It's great. It's wonderful. Eight cores and 32 gigs of RAM for 50, 50 euros. It's... It's wonderful. Um, you'll want a public IP address, uh, have your SSH keys all set up. If you want to add another volume, you can, but you'll need to move things around. It's going to show up on mount by default, um, so it won't actually just be inside. Um, add the firewall. I didn't need any backups. I'm not using placements, labels, or cloud config, and then name it and launch it. And then once you have it up and running, uh, here's mine. Uh, it's relatively easy to just go ahead and SSH to it. But first, let me grab this installer. That'll make it easier. So we're gonna pull the installer, and the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is agree to the EULA. This EULA is pretty simple. If you're using it to try it out, great. And if you're using it for non-commercial purposes, great. But if you're using it for commercial purposes or past the trial, go ahead and reach out to us. So we'll say yes, and then it's going to do most of the install. It's going to install Helm, it's going to install Kubernetes, uh, it's going to do CertBot. At some point, it's going to ask you for two domains, and we're, uh, so let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to use devinv.xyz, and I'm going to use GitHub as my OAuth. I'm going to go grab those passwords real quick. So these are the two records we're going to, we've got devinv.xyz already set up and star.devinv.xyz already set up. So you'll need to have those two records. And then you're going to add two different Acme challenges. What these challenges are doing is basically setting up Let's Encrypt for you so that you don't have to worry about getting the uh, TLS certificates all set up. So I'm going to add both of them. And then there's a pretty important step here, which is to make sure that they've actually propagated. So by default, it can take DNS a little bit of time to get these records up, 
the easiest way to test this is to actually use this toolbox. So I'm going to just pull this over here so you can see it. Um, CUC is there and it looks like OL is also there. These are the previous records that were there, but you can have more than one. You just need to make sure those two are also present. And so then we can go ahead and start. Uh, this will take somewhere between 12 and 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back when this is done. All right, that took about 11 minutes. So let's go and see if we are up and running. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out of this and we're gonna go to dev env dot xyz. And we're gonna log in with our GitHub account And now we've got Daytona up and running. So we can start um, any number of instances. Um, you can either create one or I guess I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use the slash hash API to go ahead and start a simple Flask app. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna use the web IDE. Uh, you can use your local VS code. You can use the web IDE. If you're a JetBrains fan, you can do that. If you just want an SSH into it, you can do that. But what we're going to get now is a Daytona environment, which is basically a Linux environment with everything we need to run this Flask app. Um, this will take on a brand new install, it'll probably take 90 seconds or so. Um, and what's happening is we're pulling down the dev container uh, we're using a Python dev container, and I can actually show you what that looks like while this is booting up. So if we go to simple flask and go into the dev container file, it's pretty simple. So we're going to use a uh, Python environment from Microsoft. We're going to customize a bunch of things. So we're going to be able to set up the VS Code environment, so either the web IDE or the local IDE. Uh, we're going to have uh, the different Python extensions tailored to how we want them, this linter, that uh, formatter. Uh, we can also have the extensions up. We can make sure that if we see port 5000, we can open a preview window for it. Um, and we can actually go through and, act and put the entire workflow in here so that when the environment comes up, we go ahead and do the pip install. And when the user attaches to the environment, we go ahead and run the application on port 5000. So, um, you know, now we're up and running. We've got everything we need. There goes that. This is the preview. So now we've got the preview up and running. And all of that in 20 minutes, which is probably faster than what it took you to set up your laptop the first time you got one uh, at a new company. So that's how you get started with Daytona on Hetzner.